We're busy. She's like, she's always scratching the carpet. I got her a scratching ball. And my face is bleeding. Can you see my face bleeding? I was going to say, what happened? Is it from the makeup? I don't know. I was washing. I've always had like this little red. It's like a, a pimple, but it's like, it must have been blood. Because I had a photo shoot today. I was like, I'm going to try and pop that. And it was fine until I just tried to wash my face before jumping on the call. And it then it started bleeding up there. And that was like perfect timing. So I wonder whether or not like she might have scratched it when she was doing the makeup. And then when I've gone to wash my face, or maybe I scratched it. I don't know. But it's quite like it's it's a little dot, but it just keeps bleeding. So it, it must have just been full of blood. I, I know those things. Yeah, they're just like little blood pockets. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Okay, tell me about this photo shoot because I'm so upset. <laughs> that I didn't know about this and then the Instagram world found out before I did so I'm like what's happening tell me tell me because like I wasn't it was kind of just a spontaneous decision because obviously like with having my hair back I feel pretty again and I was like I want to get a photo shoot in while I'm on this pretty hot um <laughs> and the guy that I did my last photo shoot with which was back in like April 2022. I didn't realize how long it been since I'd done a photo shoot. Um, I like what he does because he 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 does a lot of mod like modeling photos and stuff. Mm -hmm. Tells girls to he he'll just be like just dance. I love that. Just like dance. just move. Yeah, he's like just be free flowing and like feel yourself up. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so it was more, was it more like a business style photo shoot or you're going to use that stuff, of course, like for your business, like you do with the other ones, but it's more just yeah, like. He does, own. yeah, like website and stuff. He does more like fashion stuff. I do need to do a photo shoot that's more like Jimmy, like a proper gym photo shoot, but I don't like them. They're, very, what... they're very tacky. They have to yeah. be done like properly but yeah they are very tacky yeah like it would be cool to do let's just say i, I go we'll talk about this but let's just say i go to japan it'd be cool to do a training session with you and we do a photo shoot throughout that okay it's happening it's done <laughs> oh, let's book it in let's book it in <laughs> because it seems right. more natural then and it's not like hey i'm just gonna go and pretend to lift weights and have you take photos yeah exactly my my girlfriend alora i don't know if you know who she is big three media on instagram yeah. because she does a lot for jordan shall we? i love her she's so her and i were best friends when we were powerlifting like years ago uh, okay yeah so and then like she got into this whole like bodybuilding photography thing which is insane like i absolutely love it and her photos like she makes amazing content like the kind of like candid photos and stuff like that like that's the kind of gym stuff yeah really, really good. She does yeah stuff. i like her stuff will she come to japan i could probably convince her she was where was she i think she was in like japan or thailand or somewhere earlier this year maybe that was europe i'm all over the place um with regan i don't like what's going on here we got a little baby head key yeah yeah she's doing a photo she was doing some content with regan so maybe if he travels this year then she'll be there but this is ridiculous it's like every time i get to pull the tissue away, it just drips on my face you just need like a band-aid skill sponge yeah. and put it on i might have like a little dot thing that i usually use for my pimples do you want me to try to put that on quickly will it work i don't know i'm gonna try hang on i'll be back Okay, I need to go through. Well, while you go do that, I need to go through my sweet and sour. Okay, yeah, good idea. She'll be back. Okay, so uh, my sweet and sour, for those who don't know, it is my birthday this year, and I'm going on a leap year, so I'm just, like, super excited. I get to celebrate my ninth birthday, um, so whoever thinks that t this year has 365 days, it's 366, and you can thank me for having that extra day because that's my birthday and then my sour is it's fucking cold here <laughs> in mexico right now it's like of course for everybody in the world it's different temperatures but it's it's our winter here so it's about like 20 degrees celsius or 70 fahrenheit 
Um, and for me, that's just cold, so I'm, I'm wearing my t-shirt. I feel like I need to wait for Daz to like go through all this because she's going to ask it, but I'm going to keep going. Um, as for something new that I've learned, um, I have learned how to apply progressive overload in every element. And I posted something about this on my Instagram stories, I think yesterday. And when, when we think of progressive overload, we think of that more so like with training, but I feel like any skill that needs to be developed and continued, progressive overload can apply. Whether that is like a habit and I think about it, okay, well, can progressive overload apply with nutrition? Yeah, if we're trying to increase our macros or increase our calories, then like we constantly need to push and do more and do more and do more, right? So the same thing I'm learning with progressive overload that can apply to some of my habits that, and I guess like we're talking about this in this episode is talking about like our 2024 goals. I need to get better at posing. So I need to apply progressive overload into my posing practice. Daz, maybe that's something you need to do <laughs> as well to get better at it. But instead of just like doing five minutes every day, five minutes isn't enough to learn something new. Right. So applying progressive overload big. Like, okay. I'm going to do 15 minutes every day this week. And then maybe next week, even if it's one minute more, that adds up over the next like 26 weeks that I have before my next competition. So applying progressive overload is like my new thing that I've learned that it can be added to like so many different areas in life, not just training technique. Um, and then something that I've tried, I'm doing, it's an app called Open. And I think they have, I really don't know that much about it, but they have like meditation um, series and stuff and like daily little programs that you can follow. And something had popped up on like an Instagram ad and it was a 31 day. I'm not down with like little challenges and resets and things like that, but it's a 31 day nervous system reset. And I know that magic's not going to happen if I like lay down on the floor and listen to somebody talking for 15 minutes a day. I know that's not going to magically change my life, but I'm like, you know what? It's a free thing. And it's giving me an extra 15 minutes of a little bit more mindfulness. I'm like, let's, let's just apply it and see what happens. So that is something that I am trying. So if you're down for that and you want to try that this month, it's called open. Um, and it's a 31 day nervous system reset. So safe day three. Lovely. <laughs> you totally missed my sweet, my sour, but I was like, that's okay. You can. No, I, I, but that's something you tried. It's so corny. Like, um, Courtney's much more spiritual than me. So you, she often tries, she's like, Hey, do you want to just try this thing? And I, I try to be open-minded and I try to be just as enthusiastic about it as her. Yeah. But it's, it's, not, it's not me. I'm very, that's okay. I'm very like data driven. Like, <laughs> I like that though, because like you and I did our human design stuff and we're both very like clear on what kind of people we are. Like we're manifesting generators. We're very like either fuck yes or fuck no people. And I'm still learning about you like as, as a friend, right? So like there, there was something that I shared with you a couple days ago and you're like, absolutely fucking not. And I'm like, okay, like that's like, I'm learning, right? So it, it's really interesting. Um, okay, so. Then I ended up doing it anyway. <laughs> I, I loved it and I didn't like, I was like, okay, just let her do it. That's cool. Um, okay, your turn for your sweet and your sour. You're something new and you're something learned. I guess my sweet has to be the photo shoot today. Um, when do you, when I, do you get the pictures? I will. I, I was very, I was very tired, to be honest, because obviously, like, I stay up very late and then I had to get up early for the photo shoot. And I and I don't, I don't eat, I don't know if you eat before your photo shoots, but I just generally don't eat. Oh, so God. I was very tired. Um, and, but I felt very confident, which is like, cause you know, sometimes like when you're in a, like a, I was in like a one piece all the time and, or like a, a bra or no bra, like topless kind of thing. And you know how you can have those days where you're just very insecure about your size and shape and you're not, you're bloated and whatnot. I did pick up earlier, so I, full transparency, I didn't go to the bathroom. I went. Oh, that's that always way. makes you feel, but I still felt very confident, so I was proud of myself for that. Um, mm -hmm. my sour, um, 
I thought I was going to have a really good business opportunity coming up, and I know that we've discussed it. Yeah. But the person that I was going to do it with wasn't as enthusiastic as I was, and that was a red flag for me from the get-go, and it was very discouraging, and the whole thing just didn't turn out. So that was a little bit of a blah, blah. That sucks. Yeah. yeah. For the best. We both know it's for the best. Um, something I learned. I don't know. Did you, okay. I'm going to ask you, have you learned that people put on different things when they get out of the shower first? Yes. Yes. So a lot of girls said socks. And I think it comes down to girls like they like their feet warm. So yeah. when they get, oh, but to me, in my mind, so I was really thinking, I really thought about it. I was like, why do I always opt to put my socks on first? And I think it's because when I step out of the shower, What's the first thing that's going to get dirty after you've had a shower? Your feet. So you put socks on to keep your feet clean for longer. It yeah. makes perfect sense. And I'm not, I'm totally sane. Um, it makes other, sense. Yeah, other people were saying like their underwear and their bra. One guy like tried to be funny and he's like, my underwear is the last thing that I take off. Sorry, my, the first thing that I take off and my, the last thing that I put on. And I was like, that. Not I'm not yeah. replying to you. Like, I never reply to you. Um, <laughs> you know, when you just get those weird people that comment on everything and, like, they always message you and they're always showing up in your requests and it's like, I never reply to you. Like, get it. I never reply. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and something I tried. I tried to be more respectful of my boundaries. So I've I've definitely I told you last week that I was being more active on social media and showing up more of my authentic self on social media. And with that comes a lot of DMs of girls asking me for personal advice on PEDs. And I haven't been rude about it. Like I respect them asking me, but at the same time, it's like it's your business. You've got to, yeah, you've got to understand that I don't get paid for all the content that I put out and that takes a lot of effort for me. Like, and you're probably the same, like a lot of the time we spend working is putting content together. And then for you then to ask me for personalized protocols, it's just rude. Or like they send me blood work without even initiating a conversation. We're like, what do you think of this? I'm like, I'm not looking at it. Yeah. Like that. I, Yeah that's that's a sour but that's also like a good thing for you because you're learning those boundaries yeah i was just i was like look i i want to help you i'm here for you but you have an option to set up a call with me and i can tell you about my coaching process or you can pay through for a paid consult if you're not interested in coaching or whatsoever good for you i think that's so powerful that i feel like that's something every i don't know if you want to call it like an entrepreneur or an online coach or whatever like everyone has to like go through that learning experience and i think one thing for for me when that happens like let's just say somebody comes and says like i don't know what my macros should be i'd be like oh that's a great question that's something that i work with my clients to help figure out so like just kind of like encouraging like oh that's a paid service like yeah. other people can do that for free that is not within my boundaries yeah, and it's like it's not something that I can even just answer. Like you would know if obviously they're sending them their blood work because there's something wrong with their hormones. Yeah. After the conversation that we had with you, so three, four, how like there's so many incubating parts and variables that are going to play into how your hormones look. So it's like I'm not I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. Good for you. Good for you for having boundaries. It's badass. I love it. Okay. This we is Beth Radio. I'm Des. I'm Court, and we're redefining health. Now, before we get in, just like every episode so far, please spend three seconds, three literal seconds, to subscribe and leave us a five star rating and review. That would be very generous. Please and thank you. So, um, today we are going to discuss what Court and I's goals are for 2024. Um, and what hurdles we kind of perceive um, coming up, how we're going to deal with those, what support systems we've got. So I thought, I'm not sure if you've seen my notes yet, but I thought it would be I thought it this morning. Okay. <laughs> I thought it would be a good idea to start off with, um, like, what goal setting is and the importance of goal setting. So 
I started off with a fun fact, which was there was a research conducted by the University of Granton, um, and that found that 80% of people failed to stick to their New Year's resolution by February. Um, and the statistics, so although that's like often cited, and you'll hear people talk about, what's that name? Robin, Robin, he's like a big speaker. He's huge, he's tall. He's oh, oh my God. Robin, we're like people are screaming at us right now. Yeah, Rob. Wow, that guy. Yeah, <laughs> Robbie, Robbie, Robin, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, that's it. So <laughs> I, I put you off because I started with Robin. I shouldn't have started. I should have started with Tim. Um, so. <laughs> He will, he will often say this as well, but I think it's really important that you identify like what is failing your goal because there might be certain aspects of your goal that you did achieve and then it's kind of like determining failure there. So I think we spoke about this once in the IG Live that we did and we're talking about how if, uh, if say someone ate a cookie and their goal was to stick to their nutrition plan, but then they chose to go and eat a cookie. If that cookie made their quality of life that much better because they got to enjoy that time spent with their friends and family or that piece of cake and celebrated with and, and had those moments and shared memories, I wouldn't say that's a failure. I would say that's a huge win. Absolutely. I feel like a lot of, um, and I feel like that's more common this time of year where clients are like, how do I stay dialed in? And I have some of my clients are like, how do, how do I stay perfect during the holidays? Like, how do you stay perfect any time of year? You don't. Like, enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. Like, if because I don't know if we talked about this on the last episode. Like, if you're doing something that's so aligned with the, like, the specific outcome, like, let's just say you're guiding, like, super, super hard, but you hate the process, it's going to be more difficult to get to the process and, like, to enjoy it than if you were to be, like, 50% with your diet, but, like, love everything along the way. Mm hmm so we have a general consensus there yes <laughs> my favorite are. saying is clarity in the vision flexibility in the process yeah um, um next goes into our next thing is finding your why so um i wanted to give an example here i think obviously like i think finding your why is super important to find out why that goal is why that goal means so much to you is going to help you get confidence behind your goal and meaning behind it that might drive you closer towards that goal. So it's about basing your goals based on your core values and your principles. Yeah. So I wanted to reference this to an example of my eating disorder and I spoke about it on my story. But when I was recovering from eating disorder, from my eating disorder, I knew that I had to eat more, but I wasn't 100% confident in it. Um, I still, I was worried about um, um, size, shape, and all that kind of stuff, and my eating sort of was telling me not to. So when it came to the meal, I was like, why is it, why am I eating this? And I'm eating it because I need more energy. And why do I need more energy? I need more energy to be better in my relationship, show up better for my work, show up happier and healthier, and have my sense of humor back, like not be so miserable all the time. And that would drive me to eat the food. So I think like, yeah, for me, like, although it's about kind of keeping you motivated and going long and having that why behind it, I think it's also about having buy into what you're doing. Absolutely. And I, that's so much more than just, I feel like this wraps into um, the, you are the placebo book. Mm. It's, you have to like be so like connected and present with everything. So just having a why of like, I want to lose weight because of whatever reason like and, and losing weight is a, like of course it's a very valid goal but like you need to have that like deep exactly how you said like that core value principle like internal driving factor that it is like nothing else is more important than that and like your your goal is to recover from your eating disorder or was and you have a purpose behind all of it right it's it's so much like i i said this in like a recent instagram post it's like your the why isn't deep enough. Like a lot of people, their why isn't deep enough. And that's why they continue to fall off track or whatever it is. And when that why is so tied into like your soul existence, it's it in a way, like for me at least, it becomes easy. 
It's like there, there is, there are no distractions. There are no other options. Um, can we move on to the next point? Setting milestones and know what to track. Yes. Do you want to cover that one or do you want me to cover it? I'll, I'll cover it. Thank you. Um, so, like, if you don't know how, setting milestones and knowing what to track, especially, like, when we have a why or we have a goal and it is a long-term goal, it's so important to have milestones along the way and making sure that, like, we're hitting checkpoints along the way because it can be really fucking hard to stay motivated or to stay driven or to remember your why. Um, and if in measuring your progress, like, if you don't know how to measure your progress because your why or your goals aren't specific enough, then it's really hard to actually follow through with it. Um, relying on habits and routines, not willpower or motivation, and it, understanding that it's going to be like really repetitive and boring. Yeah. I think like by having those milestones, you know, if you're reaching those, you know that you're heading in the right direction. And that goes back to the tracking as well. So I think both tracking and having milestones go in, um, what do you call them? Yeah, you can. I, 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 I don't know if this is like an actual quote or people just like say this all the time. It's like, you can't measure what you don't track. Like you yeah. can't say like, oh, I want to lose weight. But if you're not like stepping on the scale, how do we know that you're losing weight? Like, yeah, okay, there are other ways to lose weight. But the more data you collect, the more information and drive and understanding you're going to have towards the goal. Yeah, my friend Paul used to say, it's like if you were trying to get to a certain destination and you put it into the GPS, but the GPS didn't know where you're currently at. Uh, you have to know. How do you know? um be realistic and specific so both in um in how high you set the bar and what sacrifices you are willing to make um i wanted to reference a toddler for this one so they did i can't remember who it was i think it was a psychologist and he was saying that when we speak to a toddler so let's say you're speaking to a four-year-old we don't talk to them at the same level of a four-year-old because then they're not growing and they're not learning and they're not adapting but we also don't talk to them at the same level as what you would an adult because then it's just too far out of scope for them that they're not going to have any idea what you're saying they're just going to do now and that's sort of the same idea as setting goals we kind of want to set goals as if they were talking to that four-year-old but we're going to go down to maybe that nine or ten year old level for something that's achievable for them it's still challenging but it's within reach. Um, and I think that comes down to like kind of what goals are you going to set around the gym? What goals are you going to try to set in business? What goals are you going to try and set in your relationships? Like it's got to be something that you can see yourself actually doing in that from where you are now. Yeah, I think goals, goals are like a North Star in that like it's a direction and it's going to like change along the way. And it's it's like it's little steps right it's that one percent better every day or just like that little bit of improvement all the time i think that's so important in your next point which i'll just take over is is finding a support system and like having a coach or somebody that's like reassuring you or pushing you in a safe way and being like okay if you're in your comfort zone you're not growing right we're not going to achieve goals when we're in our comfort zone so how do we get out of that but not going so far where we go off the deep end and it's like, oh my gosh, and then we retreat back and hit all that self-sabotage and stuff, right? So just like pushing out like a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more and having that support system that's reassuring you that what you're doing is right and is making sure that they're taking care of you and you're doing things that are proper and we're measuring progress and stuff. I think that's so important. Um, who do you have right now that is your support system in regards to the 2024 goals that we're talking about today? Um, well, one of them, I am looking at a coach. Um, I'm just not in the position where I have the time to invest as much as what I want to. Um, but that will be, I know that that's something that I really need to prioritize soon. So definitely by the end of this month, that will be in play. Um, Honestly, like, I think you're someone that I can be very open and transparent to and tell you about my struggles. And I think that you're someone that understands it from my level and my perspective as well. 
um, that can offer genuine and helpful advice and empathy at the same time. And then I would say my mother. I'm so excited to meet her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because next episode, yeah. What? Who's your support system? Um, definitely you. And then my girlfriend, Morgan, which I know that you know, she's she definitely hears a lot of the things because she like the, the business, the entrepreneur, the client, the coach, like all of that, like she gets all of that stuff too. Um, and then I have my two coaches. So I have Humberto, who's my nutrition and training coach. And then I have Kat, it's his wife and she's my posing coach. So the, the three of us like have our, our WhatsApp chat and we, we, ch we chat together all the time. So we're definitely like all looped in. Um, I would say like the four of you guys are, are my biggest, um, support system. My husband is incredibly supportive, but there's still a lot of things that he doesn't get or he doesn't see. And there is still a, a slight level of, I'm going to say a language barrier. So just trying to, because he's Spanish or speaks Spanish, um, he's Mexican. He like being able to describe certain things to him. It's very challenging. Um, but he, he supports me like so much, so much, um, to a certain extent with whatever he can. I love it. All right. The next part is for you to take over. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. how do we say, okay, should, should we talk about like our goals first? Like what actually we're going to do and then align everything with that? Does that make yeah, more sure. sense? I think so. So my 2024 goals, I guess we'll talk about this from a competition perspective. Like I have personal goals and business goals and all of that, but I think we're mostly talking about competitive goals. So I definitely want to compete multiple times this year. My show, my competition last year was like my pro debut season. So just making sure that like I fit the criteria that the judges want and everything before we start to, we, we continue to progress. So my first show is intended for July, which is going to be the Vancouver pro show. And then there's definitely going to be multiple ones in the middle. Like after that, a lot of it depends on how I show up at that show and what the feedback is. And then I, the last one that you and I have kind of like almost planned together is um, going to Japan. So I would really love to do the Japan Pro Show and maybe even, I think it's Taiwan afterwards. Cause I, I think it's like a week after. And I'm like, well, if I'm over there anyway, I might as well do stuff. So my, my competition season, I guess technically my first show will start in July and then my last one will be like November. I don't know, unless I go to Olympia and things might be different, but I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Um, so I'm, I guess, like currently in my off season, um, but just like building and stuff. So do you want to drop your big goals and then we can kind of get back on our schedule? Yeah. Um, so as Courtney alluded to, I might be stepping back on stage at the Japan Amateur Olympia. Now, part of the reason that I say might is because I'm still not 100% sure on my why, which is what we spoke about at the start. One, I, I, I really want to go because Claude's going and we've never met in person before. And I think it'll be a really cool opportunity to step on stage with her, have a really good time. Well, not on with her, but at the same show and have a really good time. Um, with the, the other why for me is that I feel like it's important from a status standpoint to step on stage because I work in the bodybuilding world. But at the same time, I'm not very invested in that and I have vanity against that idea anyway. So I really need to get clear on why I'm doing this and why I'm doing it because I kind of want redemption from my first show and I want to, and then that will be it for me. And maybe I didn't give my first show a really good go where I could be like, Hey, I really enjoy this because obviously I've had a terrible experience that I might go on this time and I might really enjoy it and then I might want to do bodybuilding. Um, I'm also, as far as I, I know you said you're not going to speak about business, but I love my business. Talk about business. I'm releasing a female hormone optimization and performance enhancement course. Um, so that will, that's got four modules to it. Um, and then like a little quiz at the end for people to do. I've filmed... I've got all the content together and I filmed modules one and two. So I've got to film another two and then it's ready. Um, I've got some clients stepping on stage and I'm super invested. This is the first year where I've had a lot of clients step on stage if they go through with it. 
and I'm super invested in just like giving them their full confidence and making sure that they present their best and make sure that they have a great time. Um, I've got some mini courses for competitive bodybuilders coming up. There's actually three new guys that I've got coming up soon that Courtney's been. Um, They're amazing, I, by the way. Oh, thank you. I want to start a Patreon membership. So that will be like a, a lower cost thing for people who DM me asking for free advice can now pay a membership fee and get all the advice that they like without the coaching service. I love that. I'm going to do that. I am uh, totally cutting you off right now. I'm going to get in on that. Um, like yours. I am yeah. a huge supporter of like friends that have like small businesses and stuff. I was saying um, Victory Media, Alora, she has like a subscription thing on her Instagram. Oh, yeah. I don't really like get that stuff, but I'm like, you know what? It's like five or ten dollars a month. I'm like, I'm subscribing. Why? Because she's my friend. I don't care about the content. Like I do because it's her, but I'm like, I just want to support somebody. And I think that yeah. goes a long way. So I'm getting in on your Patre Patreon. Is that what it's called? Patreon, yeah. yeah. I love that. Thank you. And also I'm also turning 30 this year. Yay! Apparently 30 is meant to be the time to thrive. So I'm very excited to make this the best year of my life because I've had some terrible years. Not to feel sorry for myself because I don't. I'm very proud of what I've gone through, but I'm I'm ready to just show up as myself this year and be find out who I am. And Stitch also turns one, so that's another milestone. I'm so excited for all of that. Uh, I love so much that you're so methodical, meth methodical about stepping on stage for the Japan Olympia or the Japan Amateur Olympia. I think that's so important because like you're able to see like how it could benefit you as a business, but then being like, okay, we have that external or that extrinsic, extrinsic um, driving factor. But then like, what about for you? Because if yeah. you're just doing it for social media, it like, it's not good. But if, if as long as you're in a good place to do so, and I think you've, I say this respectfully because I didn't really know you that much or I didn't know you at all when you competed before. But as long as you're able to see those past experiences, maybe at like red flags or little like bumpers along the path and being like, oh, going down that road, like, nope, nope, got to veer back. And if you're able to see that from a learning experience in like a positive way, I think it could be so great for you, again, to like experience a different perspective of competing. Yeah, I think. Um... I think last time just really set me back that then I was sort of in the mindset that, okay, I'll just avoid it. Like I, I won't, you know, I, I won't try again. Um, but I don't want to have that mindset. So I think that's when I say like, it's going to be a new challenge for me. I think that that's going to be the challenging part is not avoiding the kind of fear around it and just going front on with it and doing it. But I think also as far as like, yes, it is for social media, but it's also for my business, which means a lot for me. So I think like, it's like, that's a pretty good why. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's very important because like your business is everything to you, right? It's not just like this yeah. nine to five job that you're doing for somebody else. And you're like, oh, I need to compete. So I'm going to like, this is, this is your everything. Right. And I hope in like, like the best way possible, like that it goes through for so many reasons, but just like the best reasons. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm, I'm excited. And then, okay, so even regardless, like worst case scenario, if, if you don't compete, you still have to come to Japan. Okay. Promise, promise me. Okay, I promise. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. You so, pay for accommodation, I'll pay for flights. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're technically not in a prep right now. Like we're both kind of like in our off season. We are both very lean people and we need to like grow and build. So I think a great question or a great, Point of view for us to share is like how do we stay motivated in our off season during like a build or a game phase because like seeing our bodies change and seeing the scale go up and seeing us get a little bit softer like that's very hard for both of us we both have our own like history of, of why that's difficult um but it's it again like that comes down to like having our why and having our purpose and one thing that for for me that i do is like okay saying the scale goes up and it's hard, am I doing all the things that I'm supposed to be doing? Am I sticking to the plan? And is this in alignment with the future goal? Do I need to gain weight because of this? Um, how do I keep eating food when 
I, I, I'm not hungry. And like, I, and I know that like a lot of bodybuilders do this. It's like, we almost have to like shove food in our face. And like, we get to the point of like, we hate eating food or I'm still full before like eating my next meal. Like, how do we keep that up and keep that up and keep going when the goal, like the goal, it's almost a year away. Right. And like, how do we stay motivated with that? Um, and we aren't motivated and sometimes it does suck, but like constantly remembering like our why and why we're doing this and being like, is this in alignment with the ultimate goal? Yes. So kind of like turn your emotions on and keep doing it. Um, right now for me to be motivated, it's my training. I have, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but like last week when I kind of went down this whole like genetic rabbit hole thing and started listening to the placebo i'm like i am going to apply you did and then this is why i'm like how many conversations do you have that i think are just for me do you have with other people because you never remember that they're just with me i'm like did i just think about this or did we talk about this or something but the other day she messaged me saying she's been listening to the placebo and i was like i told you to listen to that i know and i was like oh that was you <laughs> oh my god and it, it's so good like for me, I am so motivated right now to train. I get so excited. I'm like, yes, today I've got glutes and hamstrings. I'm going to crush them. Like, I'm so motivated. I somehow like have believed or like got this thought in my head that everything I'm doing is a placebo effect. And I am not limited by anything. So me going into my training sessions and being like, I can't hip thrust anymore. In my mind, I'm like, it's the placebo. It's a placebo. I'm like, yes, I can do it. I did that in my last two workout sessions and I like blew past any reps and sets that I've ever done before. And I'm like, how did I do that? Like I've been progressing constantly over the last like couple of weeks. I'm like, how am I still progressing? And that just like gives me more motivation. And then from that, it's like an accumulating effect. Like the harder I train, the harder I recover. I know that if I recover really, really well, then like the muscle's going to build. Right. So it's like this, self-created motivation hamster wheel i don't know <laughs> yeah um i wanted to touch on like how do you kind of stay motivated in the off season when we're seeing the scale weight go up like how do we keep moving forward after that and i think i got this idea from paul's book that we spoke about last time the ebook and it's the idea that like positive sensations are experienced when we move towards something that we value and negative sensations are moved uh, are experienced when we move away from something that we value so that's probably why we experience a positive sensation when we see the weight go down because down means good um about anxiety when it goes up because up means bad yeah and it's not as simple as just changing your mindset and reversing that so that's when we kind of need to practice putting our values into other areas because you can't just simply go okay i want to change the way that i think about it well, it doesn't happen like that so no. i think shifting that focus into like what you said is like i get uh, i get very motivated and i get a positive feedback when i see my lifts progressing so I'm going to shift my values and my focus towards my gym performance and how much I can progress my lookbook in this off season. And yes, the weight will be hard to manage, but I need to put less, for lack of a bad pun, into what that means and more weight into what my performance and how I feel and how much energy I have means. Absolutely. One thing that I started doing and I made like my own little checklist before I right when I finished my last competition in September, because I'm like, I know that we need to keep gaining weight. And for me, I made this little list. So before I step on the scale, I will check myself out <laughs> and then like, like give myself a little like look down and be like, okay, do I like feel pretty good? Yes. Did I have a good bowel movement? Did I hit all my macros yesterday? Am I recovering well like am i doing all the things that i need to be doing so if all of those little things are getting checked off and all of those things are yes then the scale weight the scale is only the byproduct of all of the things that we're doing right it's not that one driving factor that is just the byproduct so if we can put more value into the habits that we're doing the scale and our body composition is just the byproduct of all of that so we can't necessarily control the scale but we can control our habits mm. yeah
And we can get, we can get wet. We can't, we can't control our emotions, but we can control our reactions to our emotions. Absolutely. And I think that's something that I really try and force with my clients. It's like, okay, identify that emotion, take some time to distance yourself from it, distract yourself, and then decide how you want to react to that. Absolutely. And that takes practice. That's something that you can learn, but it's a skill and skills take time. I think, again, that's another reason why having coaches are so good or even having like a support system where it's someone that comes from, I don't even want to say like a mental wellness perspective, but that can talk to you about things like that. That can kind of like you get it and have that. I think having- We spoke about this on the first episode, like you and I have been there, we've done it, we've experienced it. We're also educated in it and we've worked with other people and helped other people through it. It's kind of like this, yeah. Like being that right out of power. Yeah. I want to add in that if for your anybody's support system, have somebody that's like almost a little bit more like spiritual. I think something like that and just like keeps you grounded and connects with like your your thoughts and why you're doing all of those things. I think that's like really important. Um I think a yeah. lot. Go ahead. No, no, I agree. I, I think a lot of um, like bodybuilding coaches, and this is not everybody, this is not my coach by any means, but it, it is very common where the bodybuilding coaches are just like, this is the protocol, you follow the plan, you do it or you don't, and that's it. There's no like, why is this happening? Let's dig in a little bit more. Like th they don't work with like the mindset. Um, and I don't think that's a requirement of a bodybuilding coach. That is not like technically their job, but I think a coach that can offer that kind of human nature, I think is really, really valuable. Yeah, I have a post that I've written up, it hasn't come out yet, but it's about like things that I think people should look for in a coach, but things that I specifically look for. And one of them kind of, it kind of touches on what you just said there. And I think around about the same age is important because then they can identify the kind of things that you're going through with your life and empathize with you. Um, maybe a little bit older to offer that little bit of guidance, but no one that's kind of like the next generation. Um, and then someone who's been through similar experiences to you so that they can help guide you and give you practical steps to move forward. Um, we are human and we do have shit going on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I agree with that. I'm ready for that post. You can post that today. Thank you. <laughs> um, so tomorrow, what is, what, what's different in this off season or prep versus like in the past? Um, for me, like with a pro show, my feedback needs to be more specific and I have to be a little bit more strategic in terms of like where I go to compete, what judges I'm in front of. Um, but then also like, where do I want to travel in the world? Because now I have like all of these opportunities, but then something you had mentioned, um, in why you want to step on stage is kind of like redemption from your last show. And I feel like for me with my last show, like it was one of my best presentations, but I'm also like, I look at it immediately afterwards and I'm like, I'm not satisfied. Like if that was my very last show, I would not be satisfied with the end result. Um, so yeah, like kind of feel like I need to prove something to myself, which for me, that is such a driving motivational factor of like a why that I like, I associate that with everything that I do right now, like, because last time wasn't enough. That's like many athletes though. Like how many times did people tell me whether to stop boxing because he was on a win? <laughs> like if you're on a winning streak, then stop before you lose. Um, that man will never lose. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Do you want to touch on the next one as well? How I'm able to eat 3,000 calories. Oh, actually, I wanted to touch on, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, the pro shows are needing to be strategic. I know that that's like more specific to pro shows, but I also think it applies to me. Because we know I get shredded. I think that I have a better chance in somewhere like the UK or Japan at getting a placing with the level of conditioning that I bring as opposed to somewhere like Australia. I agree. I think different countries have different, like, yes, it should be for the most part standard. And it is like the bikini criteria and the NPC is the same around the world, but it, it depends on who shows up. 
Yes. Right. And if the UK girls are constantly showing up a certain way and the Australian girls are showing up a certain way and the US girls are showing up a certain way, like that's going to be very different. Um, I had to base my physique based on the Mexican girls showing up. Mm when I got, when I, like, when I compete and everything. So it, yeah, it is very different. And I think there is, not that it's required, but having a strategy around all of that could improve your results and everything. So I think it's, it's not a mandatory, but I think it helps. It goes back to talking to the four-year-old. Like, it's like, I wouldn't have a chance if I went on maybe like a US stage. So I'm gonna yeah. choose something that I think that I have a better chance at that will get me closer to where I want to get to. Yeah. You got to build, like, I've never competed in the States before because I know that level of competition is very high and I want to do that this year. And I'm also really fucking intimidated and like really nervous for it. But I'm also really excited because I'm like, hey, if I want to do this, oops, I need to do it properly. And like, I need to not be like, oh, I'm just going to stay in this little corner because it's safe and I know I'll, I'll do well. That's not really the point. Yeah. Um. um Okay, so talking about like, I guess we're kind of talking about mindset and stuff. Um, and one thing that I've learned about myself over the last like, I'd say more so six months, is like the mindset. And right now I'm eating like 3000 calories. I'm constantly pushing my training performance. And like, I've never been able to do all of this before. And I find it really, really fascinating. And a lot of this was through mindset. And it sounds like so blanket statement you know, and like an overused word, um, but realizing where little glass feelings or little challenges are. So like, oh, this is hard or, oh, I can't do this. Shifting that. And again, it, it like just how you said, we can't just say like, oh, I'm just going to change my mindset. Um, we have to have like that internal click that makes us or encourages us to think differently. So through, I guess, like some reading and some learning, I've been able to realize where little glass ceilings are for myself. So instead of being like, oh, I can't eat more calories, where it's like limiting me, it's like, okay, how can I do this? So kind of like shifting my mindset a little bit. Um, have you noticed any different, I guess, like mindset skills or tricks? I don't even like that term, but anything that you've been applying differently since your last show? I don't think it's since my last show. I think it's since, I think it's just me growing as a person and learning more about myself that I've realized that I really generally do not care anymore what people think of me because caring about what they think of me hasn't gotten me anywhere apart from just feeling shit about myself. So like there's there's been times where I'd go I'd be going going to post something that I wanted to post on social media and I'm like oh how well people see this and I'm like I really don't care anymore like I just yeah. I'm gonna post it I don't care what I look like I don't care how I sound I don't care if it sounds like gibberish like I've got to show up because it's part of my business so I'm gonna show up the way that I want to show up um so I don't know how that ties into what we were just saying but I think it's like sort of about I think that was a glass ceiling for me because I was always worried about how others would perceive me, that I was never, and I'm still not fully authentic myself. That's something that I really want to discover this year. And I, I would talk to you, I was talking to you about a business mentor that I was speaking to. And she was sort of like saying that to me as well. She's like, like you can reach that level and you can be that successful in your business, but you're already telling yourself that you can't. Yeah. And for it like you've got no evidence that you can't kind of thing so that kind of stuff is what i'm putting it more towards business because i feel like although yeah competing is like on my list business is like always going to be on top of that and then competing is like a supportive kind of role there i'm almost like the other way around which i know like i not that i shouldn't be but like competing is like it's up there it's up there and usually but i don't think it should be for me because i'm not a pro so it's like I would, be, yeah, I I'd be putting too much un, uh, unrealistic value into competing and being a bodybuilder when I'm not even a pro. I don't think it's about a pro, being a pro, but it's more so about it, it comes down to your values, right? And like how much value you put into like you would rather get people to stage and do that for other people than for you to do it yourself. I don't think that anything that has to do anything with um, 
with being yeah, so like, power. Yeah, talking about the, the boxers, it's like an amateur boxer shouldn't give up his day job to go to the gym and train. But maybe a pro boxer who's getting a couple hundred thousand dollars for his win should give up his job so that he can train properly and win the fight. But if somebody is an amateur and they want to become a pro, what sacrifices do they have to make? So that's, yeah, that's the balance. But then their work should always come first because they've got to pay for their training and their family. <laughs> yeah, as, long as, as, long as, can, as long as you can make the money, take the time. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think, like, kind of it's it's that limiting factor in, like, how much I can progress and how much um, gains I can make and stuff like that. The, when we limit ourselves, so for me, for example, is, like, my little aha moment that I told you was like, oh, I sent you a message last week and I'm like, I have the shitty muscle building gene. Like I figured that out and I know that I have it. And like, I can't build muscle. The moment like we start telling ourselves that, like that is a glass ceiling. And then you would encourage, I think it was at that conversation, you were first, you just like completely dismissed it. You're like, yeah. oh, not so much. And it's funny because like my coach had basically said the same thing. And he's like, yeah, but like, fuck it like who fucking cares and i'm like oh okay and then you would encourage like the placebo effect and i'm like how do i know i actually need to like yes okay a test result like told me and stuff but like am i limiting myself and being like oh well like i even had like a fuck it moment and being like should i even compete it's like i can't build muscle like i am putting in all of my effort and intensity into my training into my recovery into my nutrition like everything and i'm still not making the progress that i'm making but then that's like a, a, a glass ceiling, right? Be like, I can't do this because I have shitty genetics. The more that I keep telling myself that, the more it becomes a reality, right? So I, this is like kind of where this like placebo thing is happening where I'm like, oh, well, what if I challenge that? Like, how do I know? Like, let's just keep going and find out. And I would still do all of this regardless. I think that that for me was like a big why and like why would I still want to compete like I I still love all of this stuff that I do I've got another post that I actually wrote today again not out yet but I when I was doing it I was thinking about this episode and I was thinking about the notes that you made and then that conversation that we had and I was literally gonna write your name in this post and then I was like no don't call her out that's ridiculous so it's it says, you have shit genetics. It says, and then it goes, genetics can determine a lot about your physique, the size of your waist, the shape of your muscle bellies, your joint structure, so the clavicle width, which is the width of your shoulders, the thickness of your wrists and ankles, the muscle insertions, the, the number of satellite cells, um, your height and your fat distribution. But guess what? You're the one who determines if or when you show up to the gym. You're the one who determines if you stick to your nutrition plan, if you prioritize your rest and recovery, and if you still train effectively and with intent. How you show up for yourself is what gives you the advantage. So you know how people say, um, oh wait, sorry, then it goes, your resilience is your superpower. And you know how people say, don't waste good genetics? Don't waste your fucking superpower yeah yeah Done. absolutely thank you so whoever gonna, says that post, whenever it goes out know that it's a, it's a call out on me um one thing when i was like learning about all of that stuff it made me realize because i've never been someone who's not necessarily believed but like played into somatotypes so like mesomorph ectomorph endomorph and then i'm like oh that makes sense and i know that those aren't like black and white things or black black and white um but it it does give like kind of this general thing and then i continued these thoughts and i was like bikini girls most of them have similar i'm gonna say genetics as i do you and i know that bikini girls train really fucking hard like we train just as hard for our division as wellness girls do for their division as the 212 guys do but we have different building potential and building ability. So I'm like, technically, like I'm not at a disadvantage because I am up to par with the other bikini girls who have the same structure as I do. What do you think about that? You think I'm crazy? Tell me if I'm crazy. No. Well, yeah, I do think you're crazy, but I don't think, I don't think that's crazy. I feel like Courtney needs to leave a little note to us that this is a conversation I had with Des today and this is, 
I also had this conversation with this person, but don't mention that to them because then she doesn't feel special. You're basically like my therapy sessions, if I'm being honest. Like I love them. Like little they're not come to they're not come to Jesus moments, they're come to dad's moments. I love it when I wake up and there's like a five minute audio recording from my Courtney and I'm just like, that can be my little walk today. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna listen. Um what else do you want to talk about? I think that was it for me. I didn't really go into as depth as far as like handling the pressures as much as like setting up goals and my goals for the year. Do you want to wear the same color bikini? I think so. I really like that pink one. I like the pink. Pink, I don't think a lot of people can pull off pink really well. You do, Sunny does, and there's another girl that I can't think of her as well as well, Alexis. I okay. I think I'll, I've got a blue one as well. So I'll bring both. You always should bring back up. Yes. I had, I still really like my purple, but I think we're going to go red this year. I'm thinking, I'm feeling the red. My, oh, I can't show you because we're recording, but my iPhone background, I Photoshopped or used Lightroom. Um, I saw that. With, with the red. And I fucking love it. And it's just like, I wonder, all I'm thinking. Because we'll be at the, if I do, we'll be at the same show. Um, what if like I put on the purple bikini and then I'm like, oh my God, I love this. And then you put on the pink bikini and you're like, oh my God, I love this. And then we just swap bikinis. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I'm going to bring, I have my green one, my purple one, and I'll have a red one. Maybe I'll have uh, one by the end of, by I'll, the have end. A, I'll have a pink and a blue one. Perfect. We'll just, we'll just play dress up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Was that everything that we were going to talk about? Are we, we going to wrap it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, friends. That is it for today's episode of Femme Radio. Make sure you're subscribed and connected with us for more discussions and empowering conversations that redefine health. Stop recording.